Well, today we are adding a coffee maker to the dollhouse kitchen. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this project is. <clears throat> All right, I did some prep work off camera to not only to save us a little time, but so that I could get things cut and done accurately. So I have two strips of silver paper here. Now these, what I did, I had white cardstock. If you have gray, that would be a better starting point. But I only had white, so I painted it, my white cardstock with some gray paint. When that was dry, I painted it with some of my brushed metallic in silver. I wanted to get some strips that looked like chrome to be decorative on our coffee pot. When that was dry, I cut two 1 8 inch wide strips. They're about 4 inches. We won't need anywhere near that long, but we'll need two of those. And I've got those set off to the side. Also out of cardstock, I cut a piece that's 1 inch by, I don't know, about 4 inches probably. You may or may not need this. I'll get to why I have this in just a moment. Also out of white cardstock, I took the same heavy white cardstock and I glued two layers together. So this is a two layer strip of cardstock. It's an eighth inch wide. The length doesn't really matter on that. And then I have these two half inch circles. Now if you've got a half inch hole punch, great, use that. These happen to be 140 pound watercolor paper. They're actually an offcut out of something I was doing with my Cricut the other day. But any heavy white color paper that you do into half inch rounds, you'll need two of them. Out of wood, I have this little piece. It's, I don't know how big this is. It's one of those little woodsy shapes. And this one is, it looks like it's a half inch, it's supposed to be a half inch diameter round piece. We'll need one of those. I took one of these craft sticks. This one happens to be, <coughs> excuse me, was trying not to cough on camera, managed to do it anyway. Looks like it's about 5 eighths of an inch wide. And I cut two pieces, one off each end that's an inch and a quarter long. I took another one of these little wooden spools, like we've used a couple of times in past projects. Took one and I cut the end off with my easy cutter. I did this off camera. I was going to do it on camera and then I realized I was going to be, as you can see, these little pieces that come off the end. And I'll try and show you how much I cut off. I cut off just a little bit. That little short piece is going to disintegrate and fly all over. So I did it over a container so I wouldn't have those flying all over my work area. Then the last piece I cut, I have this piece of it's a 5 8 inch dowel, and I cut it an inch long. Now this is why I've got this. This wood that these dowels are made out of, and these are, that's the brand on them. I got these, I believe, at Joanne Fabrics years and years and years ago. These are very coarse, and when I paint them, this grain shows up really badly. So before we paint, we're going to cover this with this one inch wide strip. So those are the pieces I have cut ahead. Let's go ahead and assemble the basic coffee maker part. And then we've got one more piece to cut, but for that I'm going to show you how to draw a pattern. Oh, we've got to glue this part too. <coughs> Excuse me, I don't know why all of a sudden I am coughing. These two half inch paper circles. We're going to put some glue on one side of each of the circles and we also need the double wide a uh, double thick piece eighth inch strip of white cardstock now if you're using if you don't have something like I used here use some double thickness cardstock would be great too you do need some weight to it I'm going to push this down on here and we're going to make sure that that is coming out nice and straight this is going to form the lid and then become, this is the handle of our coffee pot. So we've got that. I'm going to put this off to the side. This will need to be completely dry. And I'm going to make sure that I have it completely centered 
before I leave it to dry. Now, we're not going to glue this part on yet. This little wooden circle, I'm actually looking for my... I'm going to use some blue tack, some poster tack, and put this right on here so I don't lose it because we're going to have it on there to paint it later. Now, we're going to take this spool and we're going to put some glue. We're going to use the flats part of the spool. The part of the spool that we cut, this is our cut edge right here. We're going to put that right there. And now this needs to dry for a little bit. Once this is dry, I'll come back and we'll finish assembling our coffee maker and then we can move on to making that pattern for the coffee pot. All right, the glue here isn't dry, but it's set up enough now that this is not going to fall apart. And what I'm going to do is put some glue on one end of this, and I'm going to line it up with the back of that. I'm going to line it up as best I can with that end of my craft stick. Off camera, I'm going to fiddle with it more to make sure that it is correct. I'm going to turn it to its side. And there we go. Now that needs to dry completely before we go on to our next step. But I think you can probably already see we have a basic coffee pot looking shape here, coffee maker looking shape. The pot will come next. So I'm going to let this glue dry. When it's dry, I'll come back. We'll do some sanding. We'll put this paper strip on, and then we can move on to starting to create the coffee pot part portion of this project. All right, the glue on this has actually dried overnight at this point. So now I'm going to take an emery board and just do some sanding. I find it's much easier, as long as your glue is really well cured, it's much easier to sand this in place than it is before you put it on. So I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to get this sanded down a little bit more to where I want it so it's nice and level. And then we've got another step to do before we can paint. All right, I've got that sanded to where I'm happy with it. And it looks like I missed one little bit there. So now, because like I said earlier, this wood that the dowel I'm using is made of is really coarse. It's got a really prominent grain. And I find that when I paint this, no matter how I treat it, it always comes back showing the grain. So now that I've got this all sanded and I'm ready to go, I'm going to cover this with a piece of white cardstock. And then I'll just paint this right along with the rest of the coffee maker. Um, this will give me a much better looking finish than if I try to paint the wood. Now if your dowels are not like that, if you've got a nice smooth dowel, like all my other dowels I can paint and they don't do that. It's just this one batch and I don't know what. What my thought is they probably used a different type of wood and um, I don't know. So we're just gonna do this. All right, now that I've got this paper on here, nice and straight, it's nice and tight, we need to let this glue dry, and then we can start our painting. All right, our glue has had a chance to dry, and I am going to take a piece of sandpaper and just kind of soften the edge of that cardstock. Totally optional, and it won't hide it completely, but it will help it to not show quite as much, especially since I didn't get it centered in the back like I would have liked. Now, I have a craft stick that's got a piece of poster tack on it. This gives me a handle, and I've also got this piece that we put on the handle earlier. I've got two paints, both of which were sent to me by plaid, as well as a couple of brushes they sent. 
I have black and I have white. Let's start with the black because that's the smallest. And for this I am literally just going to paint using the paint that's in the lid. And this will become the heating plate. I have to steal a little bit out of the bottle. This is going to be the little hot plate thing that goes at the bottom of your coffee pot. So that needs to dry. And that brush needs to be washed. Now, I'm going to get some place to a landing pad for a little bit of white paint just in case I might pick up a little bit of glue or something I wouldn't want to get that into my bottle of paint and the white we are going to cover the bottom doesn't need to be covered but everything else the the top the this part the bottom of that the sides all the way around that thing on the back uh, the reservoir Everything needs to be coated, and it will probably need to be coated twice, and including our cardstock, because that white cardstock is just a little bit different color white than my white paint. So I am going to get this all painted. I'm going to let it dry, and then I will give it a second coat of paint. And after that second coat is dry, we'll come back to our coffee maker. In the meantime, let's get that coffee carafe made. All right, now we're coming to the portion of this project that took me the longest to figure out because I had an idea in my mind of what I wanted the coffee carafe to look like. Uh, in the past, I've done these. I used to sell these. I did a, vi a video back when I had a Patreon page. It was a Patreon-only video where I used a bead and I made it more of an old bun style, restaurant style, coffee maker carafe. But that's not what I wanted this time. I wanted a more modern looking, more upright, cylinder shaped coffee carafe to go on my coffee maker. And I have been trying things for no less than a month, trying various ideas of how to make this coffee carafe and sometimes they failed totally and some of my ideas I could make it once but I couldn't recreate it and that was a problem for a tutorial because if I can't recreate it you guys aren't going to be able to make it but I finally came up with a way of making this a material to use a glue to use which took me once I figured out what material and what shape I wanted how to achieve the shape, getting the right glue was a problem. We'll get to that here in a second. And this has been a process, like I said, it's been a month, maybe almost two months that I have been working on various ideas for the coffee carafe portion of the coffee maker. And we're gonna make a pattern to cut it out of on this piece of printer paper. And what I'm using, this is a very, very old package of acetate sheets. And yeah, acetate sheets are very expensive, but they last a very long time. What this is, it's a plastic sheet. You can buy these in, I think office supply stores have them. I looked up online, Michaels carries a new package of the very same sheets. I will have a link to that product, probably maybe a few others in the blog post. So be sure and check the blog post for links so you can see what I'm talking about if you aren't familiar with these. But I've had this package for probably 20, 25 years, and I've still got over half of it here. So they're expensive to get, but they, they work for so many projects. And these are 9 by 12. We're going to cut across the 9-inch the side, and I've got a piece of printer paper. I'm going to back you guys up just a little bit so you can see my entire page. And we're going to draw a pattern on the printer paper. Part of my problem was how to cut a piece of clear acetate and have it be accurate. And I came up with a way. So first, I'm going to turn my ruler right side up. And I'm going to draw a, 
line and you want to use a ruler where you can get nice square lines because you want this to be cut nice and square. So I'm going to draw a half inch line then I'm going to go over three and a half inches or three inches from that line. So one, two, Let's, let's go from so three and a half inches in and again I'm lining up my ruler really carefully and I'm drawing my lines on here and this will make sense here in a second I know this is probably very confusing at this point but uh, this is what I found worked the best now from one long edge and you'll notice we are doing this with the paper running landscape as opposed to portrait. All right, now I'm going to go down a, a half inch from the one long edge of my paper and I'm going to draw a line. It's going to go the whole way. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to measure one eighth of an inch from that long straight edge and only to this three and a half inch line. And then the same thing, an eighth of an inch from the pencil line that we drew. Now, I'm going to grab a clean, a fresh sheet of acetate out of my tablet. I've got one that's partial over there on my work surface, but I'll go ahead and get a fresh one out. And we want masking tape. And I'm going to need two kind of big pieces of masking tape. And don't worry, I will have these lines. I'll go ahead and get a picture of what I did here and have the dimensions on the blog post. So be sure and check that blog post. Now I'm lining up the 9 inch edge of my acetate with that 11 in, 11, 11 inch edge of my printer paper and I've got masking tape and I've got it lined up the side of it is at that half inch mark and the top edge is up at that edge. I don't care about any of the other edges right now. I did it this way so that I'd have room to tape this down and have the paper go past. When I started cutting it this way is when I started getting, I've got to get this up where I can see I got that crooked. So let's untape it. This is the time to retape. I should have had my tape all ready and not waited until I was laying this out. All right. The top edge. Line this back up and make sure that you are lined up all along that edge. And now we're going to line up here. Now I use masking tape for a couple of reasons. Number one, I can see it. Number two, it comes off without leaving a mark and I can see through it. I tried scotch tape and it was too hard to get it off. All right, now I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to cut. First, I'm going to line up with this eighth inch line. And I'm going to cut from that three and a half inch line along the eighth inch line all the way to the end. Make sure you have a nice sharp blade. Move down and do the same thing on the other line that you drew. This way the ruler is holding the majority of the plastic in place and it's easier to get a nice straight cut. Now be very careful to line up my ruler with my lines. Okay. 
And now this is ready to go off to the side and be put away or whatever. Now, I am going to get my small scissors here. My small scissors have disappeared. On this line, I'm going to cut and remove that. That's a little eighth inch piece. That's a scrap. We aren't going to use that today. Same thing on the other side. Now, I have a piece of paper taped onto my piece of plastic. My plastic goes from here to here. You need at least an 8 inch piece. If you, I see that this plastic does come in 8 by 8 inch squares. So those would be fine for this. I think an 8 inch piece would probably be okay. Uh, I like the 9 inch though for this. But now we are going to, and I'm off my line a little bit there. So I do want to go back and make sure that I get that cut. Make sure that you are cut at your lines. Everything's straight. Now we're going to move to another spot on my table and start working on getting this made into the right shape. All right, now anyone that's familiar with me and my videos will know that if I'm resorting to a glue gun, I got desperate because you guys know I don't use glue guns very often. And you will need to test your glue gun. I have this set on low. I have four glue guns. This is the only one that worked for me. Um, my other two, I couldn't get the low setting to melt the glue stick. And I have a little mini glue gun, so it took a different kind of glue stick. And that one, I couldn't get a clear, the glue did not remain clear. It got cloudy as it dried. So low setting on your glue, on your glue gun, um, multi-temperature glue stick or low temp glue stick. We are also going to need a scrap of our acetate. So I have that sitting here off to the side. Um, I'm going to need two piece, I'm gonna need one piece of tape and my scissors. So test your glue gun. The only way this one works is if I apply it with a toothpick. Otherwise it melts the plastic because this plastic is, it melts at quite a low temp. So I'm going to take this off. I left this taped to my paper until I was ready to work with it. And I know this is going to be difficult to see. I apologize. We're working clear with a clear acetate and uh, but coffee carafts are clear glass so kind of was a requirement so make sure your fingers are clean and dry and don't have like fresh hand lotion or anything like that the fewer fingerprints you leave the better this is going to look <clears throat> Now, and I do have fingerprints on my tape, but I have yet to figure out a way to not have that happen. So I have some, just some glossy finish, multi-purpose, like scotch tape type tape. I believe that one is probably from the dollar store. I'm losing my voice. Awesome. Um, cut off all the little bits that are sticking past the long sides. Now, sticky side up. We're going to wrap this around a marker like a Sharpie or a big market or whatever and make sure that your plastic is lining up straight and rolling nice and straight and staying nice and tight. If you end up with a loose spot back up and go again. Now I'm going to take a toothpick, take just a little drop of glue, hot glue. I've gotten to where it starts being narrow. Now it's really important that this goes down the center. And I realize you guys are not able to see a lot of what I'm doing. glue, get some glue, put it right on the inside of that end, 
and close that up. Yeah. And since hot glue dries pretty quickly, it sets up nice and fast. When I go through, I want to make sure everything is level. So a little bit of plastic sticking up there. looks good. If it's not if it's not level, it's going to be a problem. It won't fit in your coffee maker when you're done. And don't worry about this being a little bit it's wobbling around. It won't once we get finished and at the very end we are going to um, put a coat of clear nail polish over the coffee craft. Now I'm actually going to squeeze this directly onto there. That's on that little scrap. And I'm going to stick this down. We're creating the bottom to our coffee me to our coffee carafe. And now I'm going to scrape off as much of that that's on the outside as I can. And now I'm going to unplug my glue gun and I'm going to let this glue set up because this needs to be cold and um, hardened up so that we can cut the bottom off of this and add our pieces that we talked about at the beginning, our two circles that are glued together with the double layer of cardstock and our two strips of silver. So when this has had a chance to set up, I'll be back and we can move on to the next step. All right, now that this has had sufficient time to for the glue to cure. Yeah, it, I went and watched a 15 minute YouTube video, so snuggled with the cat, you know, the important things in life. So you need to trim this back. It doesn't need to be perfect, but you want to trim it back as best you can. And when we're all done, we can do a little more. So, and because this isn't really gonna show a lot, the reason we're doing this is so it doesn't fall down over the, um, the little base plate on our coffee maker. Sorry, I'm getting distracted because I'm trying to see where my parts are. All right, now is this starting to melt? All right, I'm going to have to let my glue gun heat up a bit more. So when that's all the way heated up, I'll be right back. All right, now that my glue is ready to go again, it took a little longer to, re to heat up this time. So I have pre-bent this strip on this part. And find <clears throat> where you ended your strip. This is where my end of my strip is glued. I want this to come down over that. So I'm going to put glue. Good pool of glue there. And I'm trying to do this without burning my fingers. And we've got a few seconds that you can kind of move this around to make sure that it's going to go where you want it. Now. Just a little more glue on a toothpick. And in that little part that's indented where the where we cut away that eighth inch, just glue the part that hangs down into there. <clears throat> there we go. Now got glue strings. Now one of our chrome strips I like to kind of bend it around so that I make sure it's going to go around and this is going to stay up where we cut back. a little bit of glue onto this strip. 
and immediately pull it up against the plastic. And this, this is kind of a fiddly process, but I think it's worth it. And we'll get rid of all those little hairy strings here when we get done. and you can trim that back a little bit more after everything is set up now I've got a wooden skewer here because I found that it was really difficult to keep a handle sticking out without something in there to work as a placeholder. So I'm bending it around that. Get as much glue off of this as I can. I'm going to put glue right down in that oops, in that place that's indented in. set up for just a sec. It's one of the nice things about hot glue is it does get at least partially set pretty quickly. It, it can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on if you're working quickly enough for it to uh, not harden on you ahead of time. All right, cut that off and we can cut off more later. And I'm struggling with the little glue strings. A little bit of glue on the very end of the other silver piece. And this is why we did two, because it's just easier to go around it with the separate one. Now, if it sticks out past the bottom, we're going to need to trim that. And that's OK. We can trim it when we're done. Hopefully I'm staying under camera. I keep forgetting to look. I'm not used to being at this end of my table, but I had to be close to the plug-in. going to take our scissors and I'll probably have to do part of this off camera but I want to make sure this is trimmed flat and we have a coffee pot so I'm going to let this glue come get completely cooled down it's still a little warm in spots and when it's cooled down we'll give this a coat of clear nail polish over at the work tile so I'll be right back all right, here's our coffee carafe. It's all cooled off. So now I've just got some cheap clear nail polish. This will help everything to stay together and um, give it a nice shine. I like it better than the Mod Podge on the plastic. I think it gives a better looking finish. And I'm going right up over the paper also. I want this to become a single unit. All right, so that needs to set off to the side. Beauty of nail polishes, there's no cleanup. 
And I see I forgot to grab a brush, even though I got my Mod Podge, so let me go get a brush for the Mod Podge. All right, so our black piece we're going to set to the side. We aren't going to put a finish on it because we want it to be nice and matte. This has two coats of white paint on it, so now it's time to add a coat of Satin Mod Podge. Oops, satin Mod Podge right there. Um, satin will give this that nice plasticky looking <laughs> glow that we want it to have. So I'm just going to coat this with a nice coat of Mod Podge. Not too heavy because just like any other time we're working with Mod Podge, it needs to be a thin, even coat so it dries without getting sticky. When this is dry, we will come back. We will attach our warming plate or our heating plate to the bottom of it and see how our coffee carafe looks in our coffee pot. So I'll be right back. All right, now that the Mod Podge has dried, we need to take a little bit of glue and glue this little black piece onto this bottom plate. And that sits right down there. I'm going to clean up around it a little bit because I got a little extra glue. And once that is dry, then we can go ahead and see how this all looks together. All right, that glue is now dry, so everything is ready to put our coffee maker together. We can put our pot onto our coffee maker, set it over in the corner of the dollhouse and have a really cute display, especially if you dig out the mug tree and coffee mugs we did on the channel uh, probably a couple of years ago. Now, if you've got questions, feel free to ask me questions, but do check the blog post first because a lot of the questions I get asked lately, they are answered in the blog post and it would be quicker for you guys to switch over there, read the blog post really quickly, and get that information rather than waiting for me to answer you. If you don't find it there, or even not, be, sh be feel free to ask me, but if you want a quick answer, a lot of times consulting the blog post is a lot quicker. Every video I put up, at least most of them, 99% of them, has a paired blog post with it, and the link to that blog post is in the description box. It's one of the first things I do in the morning when I get up uh, on the days that my videos go live, is I go and switch over to the dedicated blog post uh, URL in the description box. So go ahead and check that out. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure and hit the like button, leave me a comment, ask a question, let me know what you want to see in future projects. What would you like to see a tutorial on for your dollhouse? If you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, hit that subscription button and the notification bell so you know when I put up a new video, and I will talk to you next time. Bye!